Hello and welcome. In this series of videos I've moved out of Norfolk into Suffolk and I'm looking at the old Southwold railway line that ran from Halesworth to Southwold. In the first video we looked at the Southwold Museum Steamworks site in Southwold and in these next videos I'm going out to see exactly what's left of the old line and try and follow its route as much as I can. But first of all, a little bit of history. By 1859, the East Suffolk Railway through Halesworth had been completed, but the local inhabitants also wanted a branch from this line to Southwold, nearly nine miles to the east but unfortunately they were unsuccessful. But it wasn't until October 1875 that at meetings and with the support of a narrow gauge engineer and Richard Rapier of the famous itch switch firm of Ransons and Rapier, the locals were convinced that a low cost light narrow gauge railway would be sufficient. It was generally accepted that both Halesworth and Southwold would benefit from such a railway. Subsequently, a chairman, secretary and directors were appointed. Arthur C. Payne, the reporting civil engineer, became one of the engineers of the line. He, by the way, had been trained by R. P. Brereton, who no less was Brunel's chief assistant. It was originally called the Blythe Valley Railway, but this was changed, and the Southwold Railway Act 1876 received the Royal Assent on the 24th of July 1876. But due to delays caused by landowners, construction did not commence until May 1878. Contractor for the eight and three quarter mile line was Mr. Chambers. There were three intermediate stations at Wenhaston, Blytheborough, and Walberswick, although they were not all opened at the same time. Services finally began on the 24th of September 1879. Okay, that's enough about the history for the time being. I will talk more about the line as I go along. Now I shall go to Halesworth and start the journey. Now we start with a map published after 1921 of Halesworth station. Now the main station on the East Suffolk line is where the this arrow is pointing and there was a separate island platform for the Southwold Railway on the east side of the station. This was accessed by a footbridge from the main platform. Prior to 1921 there had been a more simplified layout. Now on the island platform there was a station building and there was also in the yard a granary and a coal shed. Now unfortunately because of the change of gauge passengers and freight had to be transferred across the station. Passengers via the port bridge and goods via a transit shed. The position of this indicated by this arrow. This was all reminiscent of the situation at Gloucester when changing from Brunel's broad gauge change to standard gauge. And here is a picture of that transit shed with the standard gauge wagons on the left hand side and the Southwold Railway narrow gauge on the right. And here's an old picture of a train entering the island platform at Halesworth. It must have been quite a sight for passengers at Halesworth to see this tiny blue locomotive with its shiny paintwork and burnished brass 
standing at the head of a rake of mixed vehicles including wagons, vans and coaches. As a matter of interest, at the main station, small platforms on wheels were provided for the use of pedestrians to cross the track whilst the platform gates were being opened. These were redundant once the road bridge had been constructed. So here we are at the north end of the station area at Halesworth. The main line is to the right there, the other side of that fence, and we're looking towards both stations. And I've moved up a bit higher now. And the station, the Southwold station, was virtually in the middle of the picture there. And we'll go down the path now and have a closer look. Now down the bottom of the path now, and dead ahead is the position of where the old Southwold Railway station would have been, the main station being on the right here. And now I'm on the main station platform, and in that direction where that car is, that was the position of the old Southwold Railway station. And just out while I'm here, these are the old movable platforms that used to swing across the line to give passengers access to either side. You can see there the curve of how they used to swing round. And now I'm down the other end of the main station now, looking north. The Southwold Railway Station would have been on the right there accessed by a footbridge and now I'm looking south along the main line that's the old maltings in the background there and the South World Railway Station and all the yard associated with it will be on the left hand side here and now we'll go out back onto Bramblewood Way and this area was the old station and yard. So I'm out on Bramblewood Way now. The railway is over there in the background. And all this area would have been the sidings. We're standing virtually where the sidings would have been. And all the station area, the granary and the uh, sheds were where those houses are. Unbelievable to think what was here. Now I'm down the end of uh, Bramblewood, that's looking back to where we've been, and I'm actually in Briar Close now. And the railway would have gradually swung round or curved round where that fence, that dark brown fence is, and into that foliage and we're looking back to where we've just been. The railway would have been to our left, uh, to our right there, the other side of that fence as it curves round and approaches crossing Holton Road. And Holton Road is down there. And that's where we'll go now. Here I am now down on Holton Road. The main line crosses on that bridge, you can just see on the right there. And indicated by that arrow are the uh, remaining abutments of the Southwold Railway Bridge Number 1. The railway came round and down from Halesworth Station to cross the road by that bridge. And here's a closer look at what's left of that bridge, just the abutment in Suffolk Whites, which supported the girders of the bridge. The gradient approaching Halesworth could sometimes prove too much for the little engines, and if this happened, one of the station horses would be hitched to the engine to give some extra power. What a wonderful scenario that would have made. After running parallel to the Great Eastern Railway line, it crossed over Bird's Folly Bridge number 2, which we are approaching. 
Now these track panels have been put down on the old track bed just to indicate what it was like. The original rails came from the Tredega Iron Co in South Wales and the sleepers were imported from Norway straight to Southwold Harbour. And if I swing round in a minute you can see how close we still are to the Great Eastern Line. And here we are now, as the sign says, in Bird's Folly. And this is Bird's Folly Bridge number two, where the Southwold railway line crossed over this track. This is all the original bridge. Wonderful that it's still being preserved here. And just through to the other side, eventually just looking at the uh, artistry on there and we walk through a little bit further and there's the Great Eastern Railway line bridge and we are moving slightly away from the main line now and um, this is a the second arch of the bridge um, which was for the planned but never built line to the River Blythe which was to diverge from the Southwold line near the engine shed. Here we are a bit further along after the bridge and the old track bed. Uh, whilst talking about the rails it was planned to be a two foot six gauge but the extra haulage capacity outweighed the initial cost of the wider track. Now further along the track, and we're looking back towards Halesworth, there was a trailing connection in that direction that we're looking there into Bird's Folly gravel siding. And as we swing round, there was a head, head shunt here into the engine shed. And that's the site of the old engine shed. And the the railway line continues along that path. The engine shed, built of timber and asbestos sheeting, was constructed in 1914 for the newly purchased 062 tank when Haston, which was bought when the Harbour Branch was built. Other locomotives at the time of opening consisted of three 240 Sharp Stewart. Number one, Southwold. Number two, Halesworth. And number three, Blythe. But within four years, finances, or lack of them, dictated that number one, Southwold, would have to be returned, leaving just the other two. But by 1893, Circumstances had improved just enough and a 242 tank locomotive was purchased and became the second number one, Southwold. And this is the site of the old engine shed that is being restored here and marked off and there's an information board as well. At the other end of the site is this chain pump which was used from raising water from a well for the engine shed. Well, we're a little bit further along the old track bed now, but we won't be able to go far before the uh, old line disappears across fields and we have to return up onto the road. So I'll probably end part two here. Um, in part three, we shall look at more of the line and some more stations. So, I'll see you then. And there is the end of the line. Thanks for watching.